Hey guys, today I'm back in Polybridge 2, and I have some more viewer submitted levels that I want to try over engineering. Now as always, if you want me to play your level, just submit it to the workshop with my name and the title. So, let's get right into it. So I was looking through the workshop, and I found a level called Flying Vespa, and you can't turn that down. So I started it out here, and the first thing I noticed about it is that this Vespa has to travel quite a far distance, has to hit a checkpoint somewhere in the air, and then land on this other island here. So with that in mind, the first thing I wanted to check is if Unbreakable mode is on, because that was going to matter a lot here. So I put down a hydraulic and a bunch of pieces of steel, and you notice that as the hydraulic expands, there's a 100% stress. Since nothing's breaking, Unbreakable has to be on here, and the first thing I wanted to try using was a flying machine. Now, I've used this in my boat video before, and to get this to work, you need to make a really big ring of roads, and for whatever reason, these roads start vibrating, and that causes them to fly. The problem though is I'm actually out of roads here, so I had to finish it with steel. I was pretty sure this wasn't going to work now, but I braced it together and wanted to give it a shot, and it definitely wasn't. It wasn't even close to the effect I wanted, and it was just barely swinging back and forth. So I decided instead of that, I could try using a spring-powered engine here. Now the idea behind this is that I have a bunch of hydraulics attached to springs, and all those springs are attached to a middle joint. For whatever reason, as the hydraulics start to pull on the springs, the springs start to make things rotate, and this gets going really fast. Now I had to brace the entire outside together to keep it from falling apart, and after I get that done here, I tried giving it a test, but it sort of just fell down because I forgot to brace it. So I connected it up to the train, and after that, I had to delete all of the extra hydraulic phases I had to make sure it's only going to pull the springs once. And with that done, I tried testing it here, and it actually seems to be pretty good. It gets up to a really good speed, and I could start using this to get the Vespa to fly. Now, originally, I was going to make a really big mass of roads around the Vespa, spin it up really fast, and then release those roads and fling the Vespa away. The problem with this, though, is once I get everything put in place, I realized bracing this to the terrain is going to be really difficult. The thing is, there's only two joints over on the right, so I'm going to need to brace it to the bottom as well to get some more stability, but this means that I'm going to have no actual anchors in the bottom, so it's going to be pretty loosely attached, and that extra vibration might make things very rough. After I get those joints down though, I tried testing it and it seemed to hold itself up, but then I realized that the Vespa is hitting the platforms and this was not going to be able to spin because of that. Now the solution is just to move the wheel over to the left, but that means it's even further away from those anchors, so it's going to be even more unstable as it rotates. To get the Vespa over on the wheel, I'm actually going to have to use a road to push it along. This is a little unfortunate since now it takes a little bit of extra time. That shouldn't be too big of a deal though, and I was really just worried about having it this far over the terrain. So testing it here, it loads into that road fine, and it actually does start to rotate, but the speed that it ejects at is definitely not very impressive. The thing is, this wheel is going to take quite a bit of time to spin up, so it's actually going to need to keep going around and around for a certain amount of time before it eventually flings away. Now you see here, I tried using a hydraulic to pull it in, and this time it actually did seem to load in properly. So with that done, I had to add a counterweight on the other side, and this is to balance out the weight of the Vespa and those extra roads so that the wheel was somewhat balanced and wanted to rotate. And it didn't seem bad at first, just wobbling back and forth, but it was building up speed as it did that, and eventually it just barely started to go over and continually rotate. Now, it wasn't getting up that fast, and also the structure was vibrating back and forth a lot here, and that was sort of what I was worried about. But at this speed, it's really not going to get to the other side, so it's going to need a different solution. So I deleted that loading mechanism here, and also deleted the counterweight on the other side, and I added on some paddles. The plan now was just going to be to hit the Vespa really hard and hope that gets it to the other side. It's a little less precise, but I should be able to get up to a lot higher speed, and the wheel has a lot of momentum, so I should be able to just carry the Vespa across. And when it gets up to speed here, you see it's a lot faster than before. Now, I deleted the whole structure I had to hold this together, and that's because I can now bring the wheel in even closer. I'm not going to have the problem that I had before of it hitting into the platform, so it should be a little bit easier this time. Now, I still had my road mechanism to drop on the Vespa and push it slightly forward, and that's going to allow it to just barely get in range of the paddles so that I can precisely time when it hits it away. The only problem is when I was testing, it just disappeared on its own, and I realized that it actually hit the Vespa way before when it was supposed to. Now, I managed to fling it to the other side, and it hit its checkpoint, so that wasn't half bad, and I realized if I put in a ramp in the front, I might be able to get it up a little bit higher and hit its checkpoint. And trying it out now, the wheel was still accidentally hitting the Vespa early, but it didn't really matter because it flinged it really far. The problem, though, is it actually sailed over the star, and it was a little bit too good. So to fix this problem, I put in a road above the star, and this is to catch the Vespa and make sure I can guide it down into the star. And since the breakable mode is on and a bunch of these extra anchors are in the air, I could just use these to hold up the road. And the Vespa hit into it fine, it just barely hit the checkpoint, but with that done, it deflected it down well enough that it hit into the flag. So with that level done, I wanted to go into this next one here, and my name wasn't in the title, but someone said this to me on Discord, and they specifically said they didn't think it was possible for anyone to do this without an elegant solution. So my goal is to under-engineer 
this level and figure out if there's a way to do it kind of messily. So I started out here and I tried making a ramp on the left side. Now I put down a bunch of roads to do this and originally I just was going to use a bunch of steel to hold it all together. This was going to cost a lot of money but I figured I could just shave off the budget later. So trying to make this work was a little bit tricky at first as there's very limited attachment points but I realized the car is a lot stronger than I originally thought so I ended up bracing the car on the bottom just to make sure that it wouldn't move in the meantime and once I did that I actually deleted pretty much a lot of the roadway and I started off by making a really simple ramp. The less amount of roads I can have the cheaper this will be so keeping it really simple was kind of my goal here. Now I managed to have the car just barely getting that roadway on top so that was not bad and with that done I just started shaving off a bunch of money with the steel. So deleting a few extra steel pieces worked reasonably well here and I ended up putting in some wood pieces as well. This got me under budget but I still need enough budget to make the right side of the bridge so now is when I started just going crazy with the wood. I wanted basically no steel on this at all since steel is really expensive and I didn't see too much stress so there's really no reason the wood shouldn't be able to hold it up. After replacing every piece with wood I tried giving it a test here and nothing seemed to break and the car made it up to the top. Now I finished the level doing a wheelie but it worked so I guess I'll take it and I'll start working on the right side of the bridge now. Now I have more than half the budget to do this and that's good because I'm definitely going to need it. So starting out I'm again using a bunch of steel and I'm just going to shave it down later. The thing about steel is that it's also able to be much longer than the wood which is a lot more convenient. Now after I built up that roadway on the bottom I started working on the top here and the reason for this is I knew I was going to need some sort of catch to pull the car in towards the flag. I didn't know how much speed it was going to have but I figured it'd be a pretty good amount and if I could just hit this roadway a little bit it might be able to deflect all the way over there. The thing is though there's no attachment points at the top so in order to get it to stay up I'm going to have to get a little creative. Now originally I just started to put this down and had it dangling over the edge and it sort of worked but I also noticed the car was a lot weaker than I thought it was going to be. So I braced this up and got it to stay up in place but the problem now is the car is definitely not making it up to the flag so the new goal is to get it to go all the way to the terrain. This was easy enough to accomplish and you can see here it's actually landing on that top area but I still need to get it to the flag. So to get this to happen I put down some more roads on the bottom and I was just going to use these as a second ramp to get it to fling itself up there. So after some moderate redesign here I got it to go all the way up to the top hit that catching road and once it did that got on that ramp and that was enough to get it to hit the flag but we still aren't close to beating the level yet because I am way over budget. So to start out I worked on this top piece and replaced a ton of stuff with wood. I wanted to start with this because I figured pretty much nothing was going to need to be steel so I got the car all the way up to the top and let's hit the roadway nothing seemed to break and still hit that flag but I'm still over 50% over budget so now I gotta work on this bottom part. Now some parts were really easy to shave money from because they weren't that stressed out and also a wood piece was able to reach all the way across them but other things were a little more annoying and I had to use multiple wood pieces. Now the biggest save I could find was actually in the middle of the bridge. I replaced the seal with a bunch of ropes and that was a lot cheaper. Once I did that I worked on the bottom here as well and this part just like everything else I got rid of all the steel and was just putting in wood. Now one of the really big saves I found was that I actually could delete a bunch of the extra ropes in the middle and I realized I could use no ropes and still have this work. It's definitely weak but it only needs to be strong enough for one use so it should be good enough. Now I still was 4% over budget and to get that done I just weakened the left side of the bridge a little bit. Now this works pretty much exactly as before the only thing that changed was the budget. So with the car on the right side getting across the one on the left side still does its wheelie hits its flag and that's a level completion. Now this next level makes the first two seem really easy. You can notice here I have a lot of cars that need to get to different destinations and they all basically need to get to the other side. The limit of the top shouldn't be too bad but all the others are gonna be very difficult. So with that let's try it out. Now I started out here by using some steel top and I wanted to create an attachment point in the very middle of the level. This would allow me to pivot around it or at the very least brace my bridge to that middle joint. Now with that done my first plan was to make some sort of rotator to grab on each of the cars and just rotate it over to the other side. This seemed pretty over engineered and also didn't seem that difficult so I figured I might as well give it a shot now and once I had all the steel in place I tried putting it a road here. This was where I ran into problems though because I realized the road is also going to rotate with this which maybe will be fine but it's probably not going to be great. So if we put a hydraulic on this I tried expanding it out everything immediately broke and I realized I'm going to need some sort of 180 degree mechanism and everything is going to combine to make this very difficult and probably way more work than it's worth. Also I thought I found a better idea here. This one is going to be a staircase design. The plan was going to be to have a mechanism move each of these roads up and down and have the cars slowly move up them like a staircase. Now the taxi was able to get over the road which is actually really good here so I tried making the roads as small as I possibly could and after that I wanted to see if I could even get the buggy all the way up to the top but the thing was it was not steep enough to do that and it was 
is probably not gonna work. The other thing is the sports car was probably not gonna be able to get over this anyway. So after that, I realized I was probably gonna need to do something near the original solution. But I had an idea of how to spice it up. And the intended solution here is to have some sort of tilting roadway that keeps meeting up with each of the cars and allowing them to get to their flag. Now I moved the steel truss over because I figured I might need it later. But for now, I just wanted to build up something even simpler here. And after that, I put in a roadway on the bottom. This was gonna be the start of the main roadway that moves around. So after I got that in place, I just needed a way to brace it together. So I decided to support the very end road pieces and I was just gonna rotate the innermost seven. This should reduce the load on the bridge and make things as simple as I probably can get them. So I built up a couple of extra roads in the left and the right side and that's for the truck. After I did that, I put in a hydraulic and this is gonna pull down the bridge and allow it to meet up with those roads. Now, of course, I still have no way to meet up with the buggy or the sports car yet though. So it just rotates back in place and then the buggy just goes in the water. Now it might seem weird, but I decided to delete everything here. And the reason for that was actually just to move the attachment point from the very bottom to the top. But since things were getting a little messy and also I didn't really do a good job when designing it, I just wanted to start fresh and do a little bit more of a low profile design. But after not too long, I got this right back to where I was before. And now it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to get this working for the buggy. Now you'll notice I'm actually putting in some roadways at the top and this is where I want the roadway to end up. And the plan now is to make the roads on the left go all the way over to the right. And to start doing that, I put in some attachment points now. And the original plan was actually gonna be to flip over the roadway as well. Cause I thought that might look cool. Now after I got in a second guiding arm for the other end of that roadway, I put in a hydraulic to move it, but that didn't really work out too well. It just sort of instantly broke and that was not great. But I realized I could still just move it over normally and that would actually work a lot better. The other thing is that minimizes stress quite a bit. So once I add in a bunch of these, it shouldn't just instantly destroy itself. And now that done, you can see taxi gets across. I have the truck get across as well. And now the two roads to the side switch places. And that's close to what I want, but I still need the roadways in the middle to end up where they're supposed to. So to get those moving, I wanted to use a couple more guiding arms for this, but I ran into a small problem. The thing is, I need to detach the left bridge segment, the right bridge segment, and the whole chassis of the bridge all at once. And in order to do that, I need to use a three-way split joint. So that's exactly what I put in here. I make the chassis of the bridge number three, and what that's attached to, the main steel frame and the hydraulic that pulls the bridge up and down so that I can differentiate between the taxi and the truck. And at least at first, things seem to be moving somewhat in the way that I wanted. So I used another hydraulic here to hold it all together. And with that done, you can see I had that roadway almost all the way at the top, but it ended up breaking. So I moved around some of its attachment points here to make it a little bit stronger. And with that, I added in one more pair of arms for the very last segment. Now with everything moving, it actually looks pretty good, but some things weren't quite moving where they're supposed to. For whatever reason, the second roadway at the bottom was a little bit lower than it was supposed to be. And I really don't have an explanation for that. So I had to redesign its mechanism a little bit. And with that done, it was moving into a much better position now, but the buggy still wasn't able to get all the way up to the top. And to do that, I was gonna have to move the very middle piece of road. Now this one, I didn't use any math for, I just completely eyeballed because it was pretty much just meeting the two separate road segments together. Finally here, I got the buggy to not destroy everything and get to its flag. Of course, though I'm not quite done yet and I still need to rotate this down for the sports car to get across. This I thought was going to be pretty easy and it kind of was but it took me a while to get it right. So it started out I replaced the single hydraulic with a diamond hydraulic and this was to rotate the bridge up even further. The problem though is that it was just hitting into the sports car and I realized very quickly I'm going to need a second rotational point so that I can rotate the bridge higher up than where the original one is. So I had to clear up some steel in the middle and once I did that I attached a bunch of the pieces of the bridge to this one joint here and I'll have extra hydraulics pull up the bridge in place. Now to get those hydraulics in place, I used a chain of hydraulics and I have to use a chain because I can't make it rigid. Once I had these in place though, it started to rotate itself up and at first things seemed to be going pretty well, but then at the very last second when it was pulling in, you can notice the hydraulics sort of jerk around and they get a little bit too tight and break the steel. Now I switched out the bottom hydraulic for a diamond hydraulic and I added in a spring to the top. This spring should absorb that last impact and keep it from breaking. It is gonna stretch, but that should be fine. Now it actually did seem to be working at first. It rotated up most of the way and pretty much all it's left is to get that sports car attached. Now I started out by preventing the sports car from moving and I did that so it'd be really easy to see where I need to attach the road to get the sports car on the ramp. Now with that blocked up, it was really easy to see where I was supposed to match it up. And as the ramp starts to rotate down, it goes right on top of that road, locks in place and the first try, it actually just worked. Now that was good, but I still had one more thing to do and that's get these taxis working. Now that's actually really really easy here. All I have to do is add in two more roads and literally with that it allows the taxis to get over the edge and fall straight down under their flags. And so finally here, had the full level. So guys, thanks
Thanks for watching. It's definitely fun doing the viewer level episodes because it shakes things up a little bit and you guys have some good designs. So again, if you want me to play your level, make sure to put my name in the title when you submit it to the workshop. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And otherwise, until next time.